Welcome to the Rise Up Show. And today's episode, I'm a proud to host an amazing entrepreneur and business owner who started as a worker in a call center when he struggled with confidence, marketing, and sales skills. And now he helps businesses owners to become more profitable and fulfilled through meditation and money mindset. Please welcome Bogdan, right? That's, that's yeah. correct. That's correct. Welcome hey. Bogdan. Yeah. Hey, Aiden, really nice to, uh, nice to see you, nice to meet you, and uh, yeah, let's get this show on the road. Same here, same here. So, uh, tell us this short version on who you are. Short version on who I am. Um, I am a bringer of light. I am a bringer of joy. I am a bringer of personal power. And love that would be the first the short version nice. yeah it, it sounds counterintuitive for somebody who's teaching martial arts so what exactly are you doing so I'm teaching martial arts here in um, in Bucharest and I'm also working with business owners on their mindset uh, you know something that um, I kind of noticed and working with people you know I had business owners in my martial arts school was that when they fixed their emotions, when they had like some um, difficult times from the past, uh, when that cleared up, the business is boosted immediately. So it's, it's all about your emotions and your mindset, I feel. Definitely. Can't agree more. Our emotion, what creates all the emotion. Or motion creates emotion, if you will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool. So why did you start the business? Well, I kind of had my, my father. That's a great question, by the way. Um, I had my father as an example, you know, from somebody who was working in a job that he didn't necessarily like. He built his business and he put in a lot of work, a lot of uh, great experiences for his clients. And that kind of allowed him to become, you know, the man he is and have more freedom. And I said, you know what? I want that. I, I want to be, you know, the master of my own life. Yeah. Nicely put. Master of your own life. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. And how do you keep momentum and being the best version of yourself? What keeps you driven? Well, it's just like in the past, it was like just making a lot of mistakes. Failing is a great, great motivator for you to become a better version of who you are, right? Because it's like you, you have these goals and then you do something, you take some action, but you, you still don't have the goals. So you're like, okay. What's wrong, right? What is it? Is it my action? Is it who I am being? And when I'm taking action, is it the foundation that I'm laying on my identity on my action? Like what I'm trying to say is like, am I acting to get away from something? Like most entrepreneurs, they, they um, build a business because they want to get rid of poverty, right? Or they want to get rid right. of a job. But if you lay your foundation on building a business to create abundance, joy, you know, better, um, a, a better version of who you are, um, mm -hmm. larger contribution to humanity, then that's going to be very, very powerful. That's going to be a lot more powerful than you running away from something. And to, just to get back to it, um, yeah, it was failure. And now it's just this daily idea of serving the reason why we're having this conversation is just I'm, I'm trying to give as much as possible and be as um be as as helpful as i can and that i feel that when you step into that kind of a mindset you will grow um you're gonna grow automatically because like if for example i'm talking to you you might have some kind of challenge the more questions i ask the more I understand your challenges. For, so for me to be better at helping you, I need to become better. That's for sure. I love it how did you put it because if we don't get better, how can we help others? Definitely. And also, also what you talk about the mistakes. A lot of people take mistakes as something big, heavy, like I don't want to make any mistake. But mm -hmm. if we don't make any mistake, how can we learn from it? 
Yeah. How can we yeah. know what to do or not to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. The more mistakes you make, the, more, the wiser you are at the end of the day. Damn right. And we can take it to a simple thing. For example, in school, if we do a test and it didn't come out right, it came out wrong, we got a B minus or whatever. Yeah. We can see now what we can improve to the next test, what we need to learn better. Mm -hmm, it's the same mm -hmm. thing, but in life, it's much more um, elevate yourself better than a test. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love your mindset on that. Yes. Thanks. Uh, so what habit did you develop that helped you the most? Meditation. Meditation? Meditation. Hands down. Yes. How did it help you? Um, I used to be in the habit of wanting uh, my goals too much. And the more that you want something, the further away it's going to be from you, the more you're pushing it away because you're in the state of neediness. You need it for it to happen, for you to feel good about yourself, for you to feel some kind of sense of success, some kind of sense of joy. Mm -hmm. Whereas meditation, you kind of detach yourself from all of that. You kind of find that power, that um, inspiration, that joy within yourself. So you don't need to be chasing after something, right? So when an opportunity comes, you're a lot more detached, you're a lot more relaxed, you're a lot more loose, right? Like for, for example, like in dating, when you feel good about yourself, you're not desperate to get that date, right? So the less sure. desperate you are, the more likely you are to have an amazing experience on the date, right? And um, just enjoy yourself and it's going to go better. It's the same with business deals. Yeah. Well, when you're desperate in dates, it could go wrong. <laughs> yes. Totally wrong. Or yes. you can attract the wrong mate for life. 100%. 100%. Because you're going to attract somebody who's just as needy as you are. Yes. Good point. <laughs> I, I love that analogy. Great mm -hmm. analogy. And that's so true also when we start to be really needy, we try to attract the clients, but actually we push them away. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Like dates. If we like texting like crazy, sending uh, chocolate boxes, whatever, like crazy, 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 the woman say, whoa, whoa, hold your horses. Get away what? from me, you creep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you want from me? Yeah. So it's the same 100%. thing with clients and with our, everything that we do in life. Mm -hmm. So I really love that analogy. Yeah, so I fell in love with meditation. That's why I teach it. That's why I, I do these guided meditations on my YouTube channel. And this it's the first thing that we do, right? When I get a business client, yeah. the first thing we focus on is, and this might sound counterintuitive to a lot of people, it's not the strategy. It's not Facebook ads. It's not mm -hmm. uh, how to create the perfect Instagram post or the perfect Instagram story. The first thing that we focus on is their relationship with the past. You know, what are, if you're trying to prove something, then you're still in that neediness space of, mm -hmm. I need to be successful so that I can prove to my mom and dad that they were wrong, or I can prove to my uh, ninth grade teacher that he was, uh, he was a jerk, right? Yeah. It's very, very difficult for you to get results from that state. That's for sure. That, that's so true. When we're in that place of neediness, we can keep on and on. And you're right to work on the things within ourselves. That's the first thing to do. And a lot mm -hmm. of people confuse us between strategy to self-development. Yes. Yes, exactly. Because you might have the best strategy. You might have the best uh, building design. Mm -hmm. But if you build it on a foundation that, you know, like, like on, in a swamp, then you're going to have a problem, right? So, it won't work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We need to clean up the swamp and then build something great and then give the, the strategies and then uh, create the business. Absolutely. Yeah, otherwise you will have dirty a hotel or business, whatever it is. You yeah, can you imagine? Can you imagine like staying at a hotel that's uh, smelly, that has alligators roaming through uh, <laughs> the garden? In the and, corridor? <laughs> yeah, you're playing tennis and then an ostrich shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> that can be a disaster for sure.
Could, could be like a fun theme, uh, uh, like a swamp theme hotel, but that's different. Yeah, definitely. So in meditation, how did it focus you up? How can it really clear mm -hmm. things out of there? How can we clear blockages through meditation? Yeah, through meditation. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, I feel like a, I like to personalize the meditations on my, um, on my clients. Mm -hmm. So basically, I like to ask a lot of, lot of questions and see exactly where the problem is, get, a, get like an intuitive feel. And then when we do meditation, the actual meditation, um, when we do the actual meditation, we get laser focused on the problem. For example, for one person, it could be healing their relationship with their father. Um, for another person, it can be overcoming shyness, some kind of event that triggered shyness in uh, their past, right? So what we would do is we would go back to that event and we would reframe that event or see it from a different perspective. Um, most of the things that we, we're quote unquote traumatized by, they're actually blessings in disguise, right? And we kind of stick with that, with the negative memories. And for the people listening, you might be feeling like, you know what, my, my, my uh, like somebody from uh, your family abused you. How can that be a blessing in disguise, right? Somebody might be feeling that. Uh, and it's, it's totally justified to feel that way. At the same time, you will notice, like, if you look at it objectively, that something came out of it, like your strength, your um, cautiousness with people, maybe your precision, maybe you became very precise. I don't know. There's always, like, something positive and something um, uh, negative. You can get both of them, right? When we stop mm -hmm. focusing purely on the negative and we also see the positive and we take all of those together, right? Yeah. As difficult as it may seem, uh, as, as um, soul ripping as your experiences may be from your past, when you see both and you see that you are much bigger and much stronger than you can imagine, it's going to be very, very easy for you to transform that situation from your past in your biggest um, in your biggest blessings. And when you do that, you just free up the space for money to come in, for the relationship to come in, for you to uh, make things happen in your life and in your business a lot more easily than you would if you were still carrying that burden on your shoulders. Bam. Wow. That was a mind blowing right now. A lot of people don't understand that. Like you said, working on the inside, that's what makes things a lot more quicker yes get. yes 100 percent, 100 percent. like being inspired having inspired days inspired meaning within spirit right so instead yeah. of you trying to make things happen from your body from your limited like you cannot you can only affect something that's within your reach through your body mm -hmm. right like you right. keyboard like uh, you know anything you can do with your hands, your legs, but your spirit is connected to consciousness. It's just like being mm -hmm. wired into the internet, right? So yeah. instead of going all the way to the store and uh, spending the whole day, you know, driving to the store, uh, getting, uh, you know, buying everything, putting it on in your car, you just connect it to the internet. You go, you know, spiritually, you go to the web browser, you order what you want, <laughs> And it's going to show up at your doorstep without you having to spend the whole day, yeah. right? Is it going to be a time delay between when you order that thing that you want, that person that you want in your life, and when you get it on your doorstep? Yes. What do po most people do? They, they worry, oh my God, it's not here yet. It's not here yet. Like, okay, it, there's a time delay. Don't worry about it, right? When you're saying it's, it's not here yet and you're getting worried, you're canceling your order. Makes sense? Love it. Yeah, right? makes sense. Love it. Right? It so if you have like 100% certainty that you can tap into the internet, the universe, right? And you say, I would love this. And you're 100% certain. You're not going to worry. You know it's going to show up at your doorstep, right? Yeah. 
you have that guarantee because it's, it's, you have that experiences over and over and over. You know that they're not going to lose what you ordered. Yeah, it will get there any, in any way, in any form. It yes. doesn't matter if it will get delayed or if it came broken, you can order. You will so, get a new one. Yes, yes, exactly. 100%. 100%. I really like, love that analogy when you refer it as the internet. But uh, I just want to make it clear for the audience that it's also require actions, not just oh, being there course. and think about it. Of course, of course. So let's let's if we keep this analogy, like the first action is, um, you know, ordering the thing. You yeah. say, I want this. Second action, or among, you can do this before or after ordering, feeling worthy of the thing, feeling like you do deserve mm -hmm. it, right? But it's like yeah. for us, if, if we're going to order like a new phone, we already feel worthy of it, right? We mm -hmm. spend time researching, we spend time deciding on the phone that we want, so we feel worthy of it. When we go online like on Amazon and say, well, I want this, right? And then you yeah. make the order. It's the same with meditation, right? You feel worthy of the goal, you can say, I want this, and then start feeling worthy and feeling good about it. And then you allow that thing. But the feeling of feeling worthy, the feeling of being that person is going to dictate the kind of action that you take, right? Mm -hmm. So very, very, you were very, very precise. And I love that, that you said, you know, like if you're an entrepreneur and you said, I want 10 clients this week, universe, yeah. give me the clients. Yeah. You're going to get the clients, right? But first you need to do something like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to post something online, right? Mm -hmm. Sending the order. Yeah. Right. I'm going to talk about my services, sending the order. I'm going to see what do people need help with sending the order, right? I'm going to get in touch with my previous clients. How are they doing? What did they, um, how, well, how would they, how was their experience with me? You know, what are, are they better off three months from now? Do they have any recommendations? Sending the order. You might not get 10 clients from those specific actions and it might come from absolutely somewhere else that you never thought of, which is usually what happens. And it right? happens a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But you're sending the order and sending the order. So one might be like, okay, opening the browser, then you're taking another action. Uh, you talk to the previous clients, right? You're filling up the form, so, so on and so forth, yeah. Absolutely. Take action. Nice. Can, can you give our audience like a bit of a golden nugget about how to even start with that? With meditation? With meditation to sending, to start sending that order. Mm, that's very powerful. Um, I would say that you need to, mm, a, a huge misconception is that when you meditate, you need to empty your mind. That's mm. not going to happen. That's not going to happen in the first uh, few sessions of meditation, right? For sure. So it's, what you need to know is that it's okay if it doesn't happen. Your mind needs to show you something. If your mind will not shut up, it's because it needs to share something with you, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like this kid desperately needs your attention. If you don't see it, you're not going to allow the mind to relax. If you don't get the message that energy will be there um, for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. right? So your mind needs to show you something. Go with the mind. The most important thing in meditation is just sitting there with your mind, making friends with your thoughts, just being there and being okay with having your mind wander all over the place. When you being accept, present. Mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult to be present mm -hmm. as also if you're just starting out. Mm -hmm. But if you're just accepting your thoughts and you accept that it's very difficult to be present and empty your mind, guess what's mm -hmm. going to happen? Yeah. Everything collide. Yeah. You're going to suddenly empty your mind just by accepting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's really not, in, in my opinion, a lot of people love to teach mm -hmm. techniques, do the yeah. step one, step two, step three. I feel it's a very, very intimate process, just like cooking. When you're cooking your favorite food, you're adding your favorite things to it. Maybe you follow the recipe, but you're creating your own thing. 
mm-hmm. putting a bit of flavor of your own yeah absolutely absolutely right so um i would advise everyone just to play around with with it and find their own version of meditation their spirit will help them if you ask your spirit hey hi yourself how should i meditate right now right and they're gonna you're gonna get like an answer either in your heart in your body or in your mind anywhere and it might say sit down it might say um you know call your mom first it might say you know <laughs> clear your mind just just listen to your heart listen to your inner self you already have everything you need to succeed you don't need my help you don't need anybody's help everything all the wisdom that you're ever going to need is within you so true so true and a lot of people don't understand it and i love that you brought it up because it's People think that we need to all the time chasing after the knowledge, chasing after the new shiny thing. And actually everything starts within ourselves. Yes. It starts within you. It ends within you. Yes. 100%. Love it. And what was your biggest struggle that you experienced and how did you overcome it? Uh, it, it would absolutely have to be my need to prove something. Mm-hmm. That was my, my 100% my biggest struggle. My need to prove to my parents that I didn't make a mistake by following this path instead of, you know, following the safe route. Um, the need to prove that I was lovable. Um, the need to prove that I was worthy. All of the stuff that I wanted to prove to others um, while at the same time just, just looking for acceptance and... Um, and love, basically. I feel like all of us, you know, all of this chasing around is all for love. Like, yeah. look at me, love me. You know, I have the car, I have the money, I have the job, I have the relationship. Love me, appreciate me. But when, paradoxically and funny enough, when I started <laughs> finding all of this stuff inside of myself, all this external stuff just came by itself. I didn't have to chase after it. Of course, I took action, just like you said. And I love that you brought it up. But it just came a lot, a lot more easily. Yeah. It's true. Because if we don't love ourselves, how can we love another? Yes. If we're all the time chasing for love, we can't get that love. It will slip away. It starts within ourselves. Yeah. You're still in the mindset of, I'm not lovable. I don't have love. Yeah. Been there, done that, had like these amazing relationships, <laughs> but I still, uh, I still was in the mindset of I'm not lovable. So guess what happened? Yeah. You become unlovable at the end of their relationship. Yeah. Been there, done that as well. <laughs> there we go. I'm sure that uh, nobody listening has ever been in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> we all the time think about being loved, being loved, being loved, and the end, you're being unloved because... Yes. You're time seeking for it. Yes, 100%. So can you share with us also what is the struggle your audience experienced, your clients? The struggle that some of my clients experienced? Mm-hmm. Well, most of it has to do with things that happened in the past, uh, relationship mm-hmm. with their parents mostly. Um, what I've discovered is that mm, what most of my clients are dealing with is kind of lack of lack of the kind of self-esteem that they would need to yeah. achieve the kind of goals that they want, right? Because mm-hmm. most of my clients had, have big goals. Um, and it's always, th- their goals always have to do with humanity. They love giving back, mm-hmm. but there's something holding them, holding them back. And it's this exact need that we were talking about, the need for approval, the need for love, the need for... Yeah. Um, my, my parents, I feel like my parents didn't love me. And if my parents didn't love me, who could ever love me? And, uh, you know, I still need to prove something. Um, but once, once that is out of the way, you know, something, some, something really cool. I saw something really cool. This weekend, right? um, yeah. Do you, do we have time to share this story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Go ahead. So somebody in the audience was saying, you know, I had this family that didn't really treat me uh, right. My parents didn't really do a great job. And my friend who was holding the uh, event, he said, how old are you? And she's like, 27. Okay, how old is your mom? 
It's like 50. Okay, can you come up, up, up in front? Right? She came up in front. And uh, the other guy, uh, and, and she, he asked, like, is there anybody else, there's, is there a guy who's uh, here in the audience who's like close to her age? And somebody uh, uh, raised up his, um, his arm. Mm -hmm. um, and he walked to the front, right? And they were both sitting there up front. And my friend is like, what do you see? He was asking the audience. We were all looking at the two of them. And he was asking, what do you see? What do we see? It's just two guys are they're, they're confused. They're like, yeah. He said, "This is exactly what your parents look like. They're clueless. Mm. They have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea what what's going on, right? So that's exactly what they look like." And he said, "This is exactly what your parents look like and what they felt like when they had you." You didn't come up. We, you didn't come with a manual how to raise your kid without traumatizing him True. or her, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's like, "Stop blaming your freaking parents for for what's not working in your life." Damn right, right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when you come at peace with that, when you feel at peace with that, and you start owning everything that's happening in your life, that's power. And that's going to give you uh, the goals. When you don't need the goals Definitely. anymore, when you don't need all of that uh, stuff anymore, that's when you get it. That's when you have the identity of worthiness and you feel like you can take it and you can create some beautiful stuff and contribute to the world in an amazing, amazing way because you're not stepping into the world from a position of lack of I don't have. Is it that you have it already, that you own it, that you have the confidence that it will get there so you don't need to worry about it. Yes. yes. 100%. <laughs> Can you share with us an inspiring moment you had with a client? They're all inspiring moment. That's for sure. <laughs> there is no moment... Um, with the client that is not inspiring because inspire means in spirit. We're all in spirit. Yeah. Right. So maybe what you're asking is how much into flow do I, do we get like when, uh, when I'm talking to a client, I'm, I'm in that state right now when I'm talking with you because it's not me Bogdan talking and, and giving you from my life experience. It's something flowing through me. Right? Do you mm -hmm. feel that when you're teaching, right. when you're making videos? Yeah. Right? It's, it's like something is flowing. speaking yeah. through you. Exactly. Exactly. So for me to be any help of, um, to be of any help to my clients, I need to get into that state where something is speaking through me. Nice. Yeah. I, love it. I love how you put it. That's a new way. I never heard it once speaking like that before about that flow. Yeah. It's yeah. Very interesting concept. I feel like artists have this uh, a lot when they're creating something. It's something going through, like something allowing, um, allowing the masterpiece, like the painting to come mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Well, when you said that way, it's so true. When you write or when you play on something, you just go with the flow. Yeah. Yes. You don't learn how to do that and that you already have the base so you start to just flow with it. Mm -hmm. and create your own thing. Awesome. So we are getting into the end of the interview and I want to ask you if you can go back in time, what advice will you give to your younger self? You are loved. You are loved. You might not Power see it right now. When I feel it, you might feel like um, the world is this hostile, crazy place that doesn't care about you, mm -hmm. but you are loved, 100%. Two words, but powerful ones. Mm. Awesome. And if you had one chance to deliver the one message that will stay written in history, what will it be? Same one. <laughs> Same one. Same one. <laughs> Be loved. <laughs> yeah. 
love yourself. You are love and see the love that you have in your life. It's crazy that we want to run after these Ferraris, these, uh, you know, big businesses, big followings, just to feel some kind of sense of love. Oh my God, they love me. They love me. But what everybody's saying, everybody who's um, liking your posts, everybody who's sending you hearts on your live streams, everybody who's messaging and commenting on, on uh, your social media posts, people listening to us right now, what they're truly saying when they're sending that kind of love and appreciation is that you can love yourself. Sure. You can find that same love or even more within. That's a powerful one because also when we are loved, we have confidence in ourselves. We know we can yes. do stuff. We know that we can achieve everything. Yes. Yes. And you have, when, when you tap into that, that's inside of you, and you notice that it's like it's so full and you can give that to so many people, right? You, you have so much for yourself. It's very easy for you to share and give that to people, right? And it ignites Because you just that. want to help. Yeah. Yes. 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 100%. So that was a very interesting interview and I love it. And uh, it was great. And really thank you for investing your time here and... How can people know more about you? Um, they can definitely connect with me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, the one on mindset and uh, abundance. And yeah, if, if you'd like some more help, just get in touch. I'd love to spend an hour with you and see exactly what you're doing, what you need. And you know, find those points in your life where if you just shift a bit, Everything's going to change. Definitely. Amazing. So, people, if you love that interview, you will have all the links down below in the description below. And if you like this one, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more tools to your arsenal. And just go into the links below, ask Bogdan whatever you want. He will be there for you. And again, thank you for investing that time. I, it was really amazing interview. And... Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.